Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Today, Ripple's attorney submitted a legal filing to Judge Netburn uh, indicating that the SEC is operating in secret and doing everything they can to prevent evidence being submitted uh, for the purpose of the actual trial. Should we get to there and no settlement occur prior to that, but I'm still uh, crossing my fingers we get the settlement instead. And uh, th this is rather revealing. Uh, you're you're going to find this interesting. So, look, um, as you may be aware at this point, Ripple has found proof that the SEC asked um, market participants to analyze the legal status of cryptocurrencies by considering factors that are not a part of the Howey test. And so th this bombshell revelation has been known to the court for some time, uh, yet the SEC is fighting to have this highly consequential evidence deleted from history. And so today, Ripple's attorneys wrote a letter to the judge fighting back against all this. Um, okay, now fine, technically I say today. Uh, where I live, it is 1.27 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, this is, uh, was it? Yeah, it's the 23rd. Saturday, October 23rd. Uh, so it's 1.27 a.m. Central Standard Time. So technically it's yesterday, but damn it, I haven't gone to sleep yet. So for me, it's still today. And so that means it is for you too, for this video. <laughs> All right. Um, so look, I, before going further, though, I do want to be clear. I, I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so this is the legal filing on your screen right now, and you hear that? Got some dead trees up in this bitch. Dead AF, and I highlighted and I took notes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through the most relevant portions and share with you what Ripple's attorneys had to say, along with my interpretation and thoughts as we go here. And there, there's some, there's a couple parts in here that you're, I hope you stick around for this because it, it's very strongly worded, and I, I think it's gonna get the appropriate reaction out of the judge. Now, so as I cited, Part of what's being discussed here, it's like it's been known for some time. In fact, the documents in question here, one of which I cited in the intro of this video, the, these documents, um, they've actually been ordered to be produced to the judge for in-camera review. And in-camera review just means uh, in-person review so that the judge is going to get to take a look at these documents. And the reason it even got to this point is because the SEC doesn't want Ripple to have these documents. They don't want this this information to get out into the wild. And so the judge said, no, I'm going to take a look at this and I'll be the one to determine whether or not this information ends up getting produced to Ripple or not. And so that in-camera review, the in-person review, that, that's already happened. And so now we have this letter and uh, this is Ripple making their case as to why the information should be produced. And here's a tweet from attorney John Deaton on just that point. These letters are arguments as to why she should, referencing the judge there, she should or shouldn't order them produced to Ripple. Uh, she already ordered production for in-camera review and has reviewed them. So she decides, one, are they privileged? And two, if privileged, should she overrule the privilege and order production? And so indeed, the SEC is arguing that these are super secret documents that cannot get out. And the judge already knows, so she must have a strong opinion here, but this is basically Ripple's opportunity to try and sway in their favor here. And this is one quote. <laughs> I'm going to cover this when we get to this part of the document, but it's worth just citing right here at the beginning, beginning portion of the video before we even dive into the letter here. Uh, this is a quote from Ripple. The fundamental problem with the SEC's approach is that the agency apparently believes that it is entitled to operate in secret. I love that. I love it. John Deaton shared that on his Twitter right there. And then he writes, that about sums it up, don't you think? <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Yeah, it pretty well does sum it up here. Uh, and so here's what Ripple's attorneys wrote up. Dear Judge Netburn, defendants Bradley Garlinghouse and Christian Larson and Ripple Labs... Uh, right in response to the SEC's October 15th, 2021 submission of three additional documents for in-camera review. As defendant September 28th, 2021 submission made clear, the SEC is withholding probative documentary evidence under the Deliberative Process Privilege, or DPP for short. So that's just all you have to know about that is uh, that's what the SEC is uh, claiming, makes it so that to these documents should not ever end up in the hands of, of, uh, of Ripple. There's super secret information inside. We're calling privilege here. Ripple shouldn't get it. That's what they're saying when you hear DPP, which again is deliberative process privilege. Uh, defendants asked the court to review these three additional documents in camera. Again, that means in person 
because of strong indications that, like other documents that the SEC has resisted producing, they are likely to be highly probative and potentially exculpatory, while the SEC's claims of privilege appear to be dubious. Yeah, no kidding, right? Definitely dubious. Uh, the, the SEC's October 15th, 2021 submission confirms as much. Uh, defendants request that the court order the SEC to produce these three additional documents. And so the, Ripple, it's basically Ripple just saying, we want these documents. And they know the judge already reviewed. Again, seems like just an opportunity to sway. And then they write, the overbreadth of the SEC's DPP claims is illustrated by its failure in response to the court's October 7th, 2021 order directing in-camera review of the three additional documents to articulate any credible basis for asserting that these three documents are pre-decisional or deliberative. Once again, the SEC has wholly failed to identify any specific policy process these or other documents relate to, relate to as it must. So again, if, if there's if, 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 if the discussions in, 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 herein, and if then these documents were pre-decisional or deliberative, which you know imagine something that would have come to some sort of uh, policy stance with the SEC. So if it's if it's pre that pre-decisional or pre-deliberative, then they would have potentially a legitimate uh, pr uh, a privilege con uh, a claim here, and indicating that no, this should not be in the hands of anybody else, and and there are reasons for that. And so like th that in and of itself, the concept of that existing is not a bad thing. What we're saying here though is there is no pre-decision, uh, pre-decisional or, or deliberative process that's actually going on here. Period. There isn't. And the SEC hasn't even sufficiently claimed that there has been. And so check this out. This is where it gets really fun. Uh, so I'm going to go down to, this is on, so I guess it's probably the third page here. So I'm reading on my paper. I, I, I try to remember to like scroll down so in case you want to see it on your screen, you can too. But I'm looking on my paper because I highlighted it and I got my chicken scratch here. Uh, but it's like a 50-50 toss-up, like with my notes that I write in here, it's like a 50-50 toss-up as to whether or not I'm going to be able to read what the hell I wrote. Because basically my handwriting... Like, if you were to look at it, you'd just be like, what are these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs doing on this paper? Like, that that's what you'd be wondering if you looked at my handwriting. It's not exactly great. And no, I'm not even a doctor, right? Uh, but anyway, here, so this is what I wanted to highlight here. So there's three documents. I want to start talking about the third one right now. This is the one that's most interesting and um, relevant, like definitely relevant. The other one should be two, but this one, it seems so obvious that this is highly relevant. I want to, I want to go here. And so Ripple's attorneys wrote the following. The SEC asserts that additional document three reflects discussions concerning the SEC staff's communications with third parties regarding transactions in certain digital assets. The SEC has claimed that former director William Hinman's June 14, 2018 speech reflected only his personal views and not the views of the SEC, and former director Hinman has submitted a declaration to that effect. So just pause. I'm assuming you guys know at this point what we're talking about. But when they're referencing the June 14th, 2018 speech that William Hinman gave, former director at the SEC, uh, we're talking about the speech that he gave, which effectively gave Ethereum a free pass. It's like, hey, uh, you know, this doesn't look like a security. And it was, he said it's just his opinion, but it was presented in such a way that uh, it was supposed to be taken as guidance from the SEC itself. That's that's what actually did end up happening here. And this is why this is so interesting. Check this out. Ripple's attorneys write the following. But this email chain demonstrates that the SEC staff was asking, check this out, the staff was asking market participants to analyze the status of digital assets applying factors that are not part of the Howey test, but rather come directly and uniquely from former director Hinman's speech. <gasps> well, how about that? Well, if Hinman, if the Hinman speech is actually SEC market guidance that fatally harms the SEC case, as XRP was and is more decentralized than Ethereum. And so XRP fits the Hinman framework better than Ethereum. And so, so again, if the SEC is saying here that you should look at this framework uh, to determine whether or not, uh, you know, you're, the way you're participating in the ecosystem, uh, you know, you're selling of whatever asset is that you're talking about, whether or not that constitutes sale of an unregistered security and figuring that out, go to old Billy Hinman's speech right here and use that as a framework. Well, if, if that's the case, then XRP is looking pretty damn good under that framework because, again, XRP fits it much better than Ethereum. And then the... Uh, 
And then the Ripple's attorneys write the following. Uh, the SEC contends the documents reveals the internal deliberations of SEC staff, but fails to identify any decision or policy process that was before the commission itself. Indeed, the only decision that the SEC identifies is consideration of whether the SEC should issue a no-action letter, a decision that expressly could not involve the commission because staff no-action letters are issued by the staff of the Division of Corporation Finance. In any event, the SEC is not entitled to withhold facts that it learned or information gathered from third parties merely because it was gathered in the context of considering whether to issue a no-action letter, and the SEC does not appear to have made any effort to segregate factual information from deliberations, further underscoring the gross overbreadth of the SEC's DPP claims in this case. And so the SEC, basically, so the SEC was internally debating whether or not to issue a no-action letter for, for whatever cryptocurrency this third-party market participant was supporting. And so no-action letters do not... Uh, no action letters do not indicate internal deliberations, which could reasonably be protected as privileged uh, com uh, commission communication, specifically, because they're, they're part of the division of corporation finance. And so regarding no action letters on top of that, uh, John Deaton cited the following. <laughs> uh, this is Attorney John Deaton now. Two crucial factors for no action by SEC. Number one. The ledger network and digital assets are fully developed and operational. Hmm. And two, holders of the digital asset are immediately able to use it for intended functionality on the network. How about that? And so those are two factors here. It's two factors present with the XRP ledger and XRP and not Ethereum, which is why it's so absurd that Ethereum gets the free pass, but XRP, the XRP ledger apparently does not. But here you can see, here's a, a investor.gov website talking about no action letters, just to make sure we're on the same page as what this is. An individual or entity who is not certain whether a particular product, service, or action would constitute a violation of the federal securities law may request a no action letter from the SEC. Most no action letters describe the request, analyze the particular facts and circumstances involved, discuss applicable laws and rules, and, if the staff grants the request for no action, concludes that the SEC staff would not recommend that the commission take enforcement action against the requester based on the facts and representations described in the individual's or entity's request. And so there you go. If you get a no action letter, if you request it, and then the, uh, the, the SEC is like, yep, you're in the, you're in the clear. You're not, you, you just go about your business the way that you've described. You are not in violation. So that's, that's the reason that this is crucial. And so again, what, they're, what they were citing here is that there was a, a staff within the Division of Corporation Finance considering that. So it has nothing to do with the deliberative process or policy making. Nothing to do with it. And, and, and still they're claiming that there, there's, there's privilege here. Which is completely, it's, it's a completely bogus claim. I, I just, it, it seems like a certainty the judge would see through this. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think? Uh, and then the uh, Ripple's attorneys write the following. The fundamental problem with the SEC's approach is that the agency apparently believes that it is entitled, oh, I love this. This is what I was saying at the beginning. Here, here it is in full context. Uh, the fundamental problem with the SEC's approach is that the agency apparently believes that it is entitled to operate in secret and to withhold from actual litigants whose reputations and livelihoods are at stake due to its own affirmative litigation choices, as opposed to the general public pursuant to FOIA, which is Freedom of Information Request, um, any internal documents that relate to its mission broadly defined. This approach finds no basis in law because it turns on its head Congress's lawfully enacted presumption of openness in government, uh, government documents, subject to circumscribed narrow exceptions. And so the SEC's approach also reinforces why the internal SEC documents that the court ordered to be produced are so critical in this case. Ripple's arguments include that the SEC failed to provide fair notice that it would consider Ripple sales of XRP to be securities offerings, the SEC only proves the point with its tooth-and-nail fight 
to avoid disclosure of documents and communications that bear on what it knew and what it considered when approaching the question of when digital assets would be considered securities. And so to anybody listening to this, you're like, yeah, of course they are. Of course they are. Which is why it's it's so plain to see. Uh, you know, I know we can't get in the mind of the judge, but it's so plain to see. I just have a hard time thinking that the arguments that the SEC made would trick the judge. I really find a hard, for something like this, I really find that difficult. So I don't know what's going to happen. Don't know how the, what the judge is going to find here. But I'd be, sh- I, I, sh- shock too strong a word? I'd be very surprised at a minimum. Like This should be included in the case, and these documents should be produced to Ripple. This could not be more obvious, right? Uh, and then Ripple's attorneys write the following. The SEC's own description of the, uh, of the additional documents suggests they are highly relevant to this matter. Additional documents one and two both attach an October 23rd, 2018 memorandum. That's uh, five years into the alleged unlawful offering charged here, uh, drafted by four attorneys at two law firms who represented that together. They had more than six decades of securities law experience. Now, notably, those lawyers provided the memo not on behalf of any clients, but rather as members of the securities bar because they perceived the confusion surrounding the SEC's approach to regulating digital assets, even among reputable law firms, was at an unprecedented level. These attorneys explain in the memorandum that, in their view, the SEC had not provided sufficient clarity as to the application of federal securities laws to digital assets. That the SEC attached this memorandum to additional documents, one and two, suggest that these documents plainly bear on the extent to which the market understood whether it was obvious, as the SEC has alleged in relation to the individual defendants, that XRP or similar digital assets were securities. And so to translate that, what they're saying here is that this is evidence, likely, in in these documents, documents one and two, that major law firms, which are working with the SEC, or at least they were at the time, these major law firms that were working with the SEC at the time, uh, they told the SEC that there is not sufficient legal clarity. It's it's reasonable to, to, to presume that's exactly what would be in there. And e- either way, what, like, the degree to which it's worded like that, fine. What, it's, 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 it's a lot like that or a little like that, whatever it is. It, it's, it's, speci- it's absolutely exactly on this topic. It's exactly on this topic. It's completely relevant to this case. That's why it should be included here. And then they write, if these documents reveal either the SEC's or the market's understanding or lack thereof of the application of federal securities laws to XRP or similar digital assets, then they are at a minimum highly relevant and potentially exculpatory and should be produced. (laughs) You're damn straight. Uh, Moving on a little further. Uh, Finally, the SEC's conclusory argument that production of these documents to defendants would chill internal deliberations and therefore negatively impact the quality of agency decision-making is unpersuasive. SEC staff, like staff of all federal agencies, work under the day-to-day expectation that their official documents and communications may be subject to review under FOIA, that's Freedom of Information Act, uh, in response to congressional requests for information and in litigation. And and so look, if divulging this info chills internal deliberations, then these people have no business working within the federal government in any capacity, period. Uh, The type of person that couldn't openly, what type of nefarious stuff is in here that you need it hidden? Come on, I, I, I just, I'm not buying that in the least here. And then to wrap this up, this is the final quote I'm going to share with you from the attorneys, Ripple's attorneys. They write, The SEC's insistence that its business would grind to a halt if it was prevented from maintaining an essentially absolute shroud of secrecy over the activities of its staff is irreconcilable with the relevant case law and decades of administration experience. Ba-bam. Well said. So I think it's pretty clear what needs to be done here. These documents need to be produced to Ripple. They need to be a part of the case. And so I, I'm looking forward to uh, some sort of ruling from the judge in that direction, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, it's fine that she's letting, you know, both both sides are making their arguments first. But we'll just have to sit tight until then. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea.
Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.